Elon Musk recently tweeted that you shouldn't drive your car with air recirculation on, which means it's blowing air around and around and around instead of taking air in from the outside, and that you should get a carbon dioxide monitor to monitor the CO2 levels in your car, but also in your house, your office, etc. So what did I do? I got a CO2 monitor. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So yes, I got a CO2 monitor because I figured, hey, I'm gonna test out the Model Y and we're gonna see what the CO2 levels are with various things. I'm also gonna test it in the house. I've checked a couple of places in the house and actually down in the basement's a little scary. Upstairs wasn't so bad, but <laughs> I'm gonna see how high it gets before it stops because it keeps counting up until it gets to a stopping place. But we're at 900, so we're just getting to the yellow level here. But anyway, you can see it's got CO2, it's got temperature and it's got relative humidity and it's got an alarm that goes off if it gets a above 1500 parts per million. So that's actually super useful and you can keep it around the house. If you're interested, this particular model, I'll leave a link to that in the description. It's on Amazon. I just picked up a mid-range one. It was like $55. So I figured it looked like it had a nice monitor because you can see how it goes from green to yellow and then to red if it gets bad over there. And we'll see that in just a moment. But anyway, let's take a look at the experiments outside, inside, and in the car most particularly. I took Elon Musk's advice and purchased a CO2, and it does a whole bunch of other things, but anyway, primarily it monitors CO2, and I'm actually running a calibration step outside, as you can see. <laughs> so anyway, it should be done in 18 seconds here. It takes like 200 seconds to calibrate, and before I did the calibration, it was getting about 400 parts per million outdoors. It said to do the calibration outside. By the way, it is ridiculously humid out here. It's something like 75% humidity out today. <laughs> it's Georgia in the summertime. All right, so this thing should be just about done. And hopefully in a moment, we will see something that will appear. Oh, there we go. So I think it just takes a moment for it to like do this because when I first turned it on, it said 500 parts per million and then it changed. But anyway, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go inside the house. So I think anything over like a thousand parts per million is not particularly good. I liked this one in particular because it has like a green and then a yellow and then a red if it gets really bad. And so I'm gonna test this out in the house. Yeah, you can see 73% relative humidity. It's ridiculous outside. I'm sweating sitting here in the shade. Uh, but anyway, I think it's gonna take a moment for it to actually start to register because I doubt it's 500. I think that's just the default. But the most important thing, so I'm gonna check the inside of the house in uh, several different rooms just to see. But the most important thing is I'm going to drive over to the grocery store because I have to go buy some groceries and I'm going to turn the air recirculator on. So basically it's just blowing air from inside out again. And I'm going to check and see what that looks like after you know driving for like 10 or 15 minutes. I'm not going to the closest, oh, there we go. See, it knocked it down to 410. So yeah, you can see it's 30 degrees centigrade, 76% relative humidity and 410 parts per million. So reasonable, so it's all in the good. You can see it's in that little good thing there. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try it with the, uh, with the air being recirculated and see how bad it gets with only one person in the car. My wife is out of town, so can't use her as a test guinea pig. Um, but we'll see what happens in 15 minutes. And then if it gets up pretty high, what I'll do on the way back is I will turn on the, you know, blowing the air in from the outside as opposed to from the inside. And we will see if we have better results. All right, wow, 80% relative humidity. All right, anyway, so let's check indoors next and see how that is. All right, so now we're indoors and uh, yeah, you can see it's going up rapidly here. <laughs> I don't know why it still says it's 30 degrees centigrade. I have, it probably takes a few minutes for the therm uh, thermometer to actually, you know, achieve ambient temperature with the rest of the space. But you can see that the relative humidity has gone down to 64%, which is still pretty high. And the CO2 parts per million is, uh, continuing to climb. So it looks like it takes maybe a minute or so for it to kind of stabilize and give you um, a sense of this. But this also, just FYI, you can hang it on the wall and it's got a USB charging port. Um, they shipped it with complete, like with the battery completely full, which was really nice. I appreciate that. <laughs> I always hate when the battery's like mostly dead, but my goodness, it still keeps climbing. I'm a little bit worried now because, you know, I think over about 750 parts per million, it would start to get a little iffy indoors. Again, it has been, um, you know, you can see, I'm living here right now. Both my son and my wife are out of town, so it's all me by myself. So actually it's 
probably reasonable, but I would imagine with more people in the house, it would be worse. So it looks like it's actually stabilized at 686 parts per million. So still, as you can see, in the good range. So that's good. So next we're gonna try driving. I'm gonna get in the car. I, you know, I was in there this morning briefly, but uh, nobody's been in there for hours. So we'll take a look at what the CO2 level is immediately and then over time as I drive it. All right, so I let this thing sit for a couple of minutes in the car without me in the car. So that's sort of our default value of 567, which is still higher than outdoors. But anyway, we will see how that works. Anyway, I'm gonna lean it back in that little slot so it can stay there while I drive. And then I guess I'm gonna to have to turn off auto mode so I can manually specify recirculation. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on recirculation mode and uh, I'll turn off auto, which I, <laughs> I always leave auto on. So anyway, we'll see. It looks like it's already starting to climb. So what I'm going to do is drive, like I said, it's about a 15 minute drive and we will see what happens. We will go to Kroger and I'll film this a little bit as I go. But again, like I said, I'm on my own. So mostly it's just the results. It doesn't really matter about the drive, but I will time the drive just to make sure that I know exactly how long I was in the car. All right, so just FYI, I've been in the car for about two minutes right now, and it's already up to 799, climbing to 800. Again, I've got the recirculation on, so it's recirculating air, but this is a little bit terrifying that it's going up this quickly. Um, so anyway, I haven't, even, I haven't even gotten out of our neighborhood yet, so it's already that high, so we'll see how it does. It's supposed to be a 12 minute drive, so we will check back again when I get to a stoplight. All right, so uh, gosh, I guess it's been about four to five minutes of driving, but uh, you can see it's well over a thousand already. And uh, <laughs> that's a little terrifying actually. So anything over a thousand is supposed to make you kind of drowsy and less than your optimal when you're working. So this is one of those things where you can definitely check your office or your home or something and see what the, what the, the ratings are around there. But as you can see, it's climbing very, very quickly. And I'm just one person in the car. This is not, you know, this is not a group of people. This is just me all by myself. And by the way, this particular monitor has a buzzer that goes off if you get over 1500 parts per million is kind of a warning. Sorry, so you can see better. Uh, but anyway, if it, if it gets to there, <laughs> I may have to turn it off because it might be very annoying, but it looks like it's gonna get there really fast, well before I arrive at Kroger. Anyway, we'll check back in a minute. The light just changed. All right, so we're now at about 10 minutes. Sorry, the bad reflections here. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but you can see that we're at, um, um, 1,256 parts per million. It's about two more minutes till when I get to the store. I may hang out in the car for just a few minutes to see if it gets to 1,500 because that's the part where the buzzer is supposed to go off. But anyway, it it's taken just about 10 minutes for it to get from, what was that, like 550 to way more than double that. So that's pretty frightening. And that's with the air recircula recirculation on again, just as a reminder. Well, as you can see, we are approaching 1,500. So, oh. <laughs> So we've officially gone into dangerous territory. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to make you guys listen to that for too long. I'm not sure how to turn it off. Maybe if I push the button up here. Mm, nope, it's just going to be. So you can see it's gotten up to 1640. I mean, my goodness, that is terrifying. So, all right, I'm going to turn this off and we'll reset here. All right, so as you can hear, auto is on now. <laughs> it automatically kicked it back in again. We're at 516 in the car. 750 inside the Kroger, so I guess not too terrible, but anyway, so we are going to see, it should be another, you know, 12 or so minutes to get back home again, so right now it's at 517, and let's see, as you can see here, auto, and I believe that would be, oh, actually, wait, let me see if I can uh, turn off, okay, <laughs> yeah, I had turned it on, and I guess it had stayed on, so anyway, we're going, I've turned off the, um, I don't know if you can see that, jeez, the reflections are terrible, Anyway, I turned off the, um, the recirculation here, so now it's time to drive home. We're at 625, so it is going up, but you can also hear the blower because it's you know, very hot outside. 32 degrees outside, and I've got it set for 19 down here. So anyway, hopefully this will not continue to climb because my goodness, that was terrifying. All right, well, as you can tell, even with the air recirculation off, we're still at 11.12 right now, so it's climbing. It's definitely more slow than it was before. Uh, the uh, If it gets up to 1,500 parts per million, I'm going to um, do something where I uh, uh, open up the windows to check on it because I'm curious to see how that will work. But it has been climbing slower than with the recirculation on, but definitely not what I would call 
uh, ideal at this point. So anyway, interesting, interesting. It does seem to, nope, it's still going up. So yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. It'll be a few more minutes before I get home. And back home, I closed the windows, and even with the air recirculation blowing, you can uh, definitely tell that it's starting to go back up again. <laughs> so, interesting. It's basically, if you close the windows, you're going to have higher CO2 levels. That's, that's pretty much the fact. All right, so as you saw, the Model Y is actually pretty hermetically sealed. Like in here, it seems like the basement is worse than the upstairs, probably because it's much more sealed because it's a half exposed basement. So half of the house, like this side is completely underground and only that side has a couple of doors that lead outside. So probably we're talking about a lot more CO2 getting trapped in the basement. The upstairs has a dog door, it has windows everywhere. It has doors that have, you know, leaking stuff. So it's leaking a lot and I have some, some plants up there. So one thing I might need to do is try to find some like low light plants and put them down here to try to absorb a little bit because 925 parts per million is not unsafe but it's not fantastic so anyway that's an interesting fact just to find out but the more important part of this is it was absolutely crazy with just one person in the car that was just me in the car with air recirculation on in about 10 to 12 minutes i hit 1500 parts per million and the alarm went off that is pretty crazy that's far more co2 in the air Air than I expected. Interestingly enough, I started having a headache and feeling a little bit weird, but I'm pretty much positive that that was because I was looking at this number going up and freaking myself out. Because, you know, clearly I've driven the car around a lot of times without thinking about it. But anyway, having recirculation on was not great. The interesting part was even turning recirculation off so it was pulling a lot of air in from the outside. It was having to do a lot of air conditioning and blow a lot of air in from the outside, but it was still well over 1,300 parts per million before I rolled the windows down. When I rolled the windows down, it just took a minute or two before it was at like outdoor levels of like 440, 450 parts per million. So it went down really fast. But as I said, the big problems with that are number one, of course, if it's hot or cold, you're going to get hot or cold because you're going to be exposed to the atmosphere. Uh, it did feel kind of nice to have the air blowing around, though, I have to say. But the bigger part, if you're driving long distances, is that your vehicle's range is going to go way down. Obviously, if you're just driving around town, it doesn't matter if you lose a few miles because the windows are open and you're creating turbulence. But if you're driving a long distance, on the highway especially or something, you're going to lose a lot of range if you keep the windows down. But on the other hand, if you're doing like long commutes or if you're doing longish road trips and you start getting tired, I actually started to realize, I was like, gosh, no wonder. You know, I go to drive to see my parents and I get an hour into the drive and I'm just completely exhausted. And a lot of that might not have to do with the fact that I'm just tired or something. It might literally be the amount of CO2 in the vehicle. And just as a quick reminder, if you're confused about this, this is not carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide will actually bind to your red blood cells and can actually kill you. CO2, I guess it could kill you if it was all CO2 in the atmosphere, but it's not going to kill you. It's just going to make you less than, you know, ideal, less than optimal. You won't be, you know, be able to focus as well as you should be able to. You'll be very sleepy, things like that. And of course, also it goes away immediately because it's just expelled in your breath. That's what we're doing. We're giant CO2 machines. We take in oxygen and we produce CO2. Fortunately, there's a bunch of plants outside that take in CO2 and produce oxygen. So it's all a nice balance that works out. But anyway, so it's not something that's unsafe in the sense that it has long-term effects, but if CO2 is in the air, it's going to make you sleepy. It could give you a headache. There could be other things that go along with that. So having it lower is really good. So if you're on a longer trip or something and you start getting sleepy, my recommendation from looking at this is immediately roll the windows down, blast some fresh air in there for four or five minutes, and you should get refreshed and feel a whole bunch better. And of course, as Elon said, you shouldn't turn recirculation on in the vehicle because he said it doesn't really save that much on energy efficiency, but it's really bad for you in terms of CO2 levels and stuff. It looks like the automatic systems pretty much turn the recirculation off so it's blowing fresh air in. So that's a good thing because I pretty much always have it on auto. And the last thing I learned is not really a revelation about me because I already knew this, but now I'm gonna be taking this thing everywhere. I took it into the grocery store I was measuring the CO2 in there. I'm going to take it to my office. I'm going to take it to every single room.
room in the house. You can see it has actually stabilized at 900, 901. So it's actually less than a thousand down here, but much, much higher than upstairs. So this is interesting. I'll, I'll have to take some steps to mitigate that kind of thing. But I think this is fascinating to get some actual data and look around. I'm going to put this in the car and drive around some more and get some more data. You know, maybe because the humidity is so ridiculously high right now, it's causing the CO2 levels to be higher. And so maybe if it was a little bit nicer outside and not so humid, it would be better. So I'll test this out some more. But I thought it was certainly valid to check this out and to see how much CO2 is actually in a car. And you can see that a car is the absolute worst place. It's a very confined space, very, very well sealed. And you've got a lot of people just producing CO2 constantly. So maybe we should get some like house plants or car plants and stick them in the car. <laughs> we'll have little plants to produce a little bit of oxygen for us to make life better. But anyway, in the meantime, definitely turn recirculation off. And if you start getting sleepy in the car, I highly recommend rolling the windows down for four or five minutes because that did the trick no problem at all. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought provoking and interesting. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.